right guys today we're going to talk about the sawmill i've owned this sawmill for almost two years now and uh some of the things that i want to talk to you about is uh like the experiences that i have whenever i first got my sawmill and now when i first got my sawmill and i cut the very first board uh on it the big con that i had seen is I was cutting waves in the wood. I was cutting waves in the wood. I was cutting uh, the boards off square. Uh, also, I was just uh, really, the quality of lumber was down compared to what I cut now. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that will help you, not only if you're looking into buying a band mill, but if you own one and you're experiencing these same problems. So, at first, as you see, what I'm sitting on is a track. And the way this is, this is a Woodland Mills HM-126. And the reason that I picked it is, you know, for the money I spent on it, it was uh, the best meal that I could buy for that money. So, that's why I went with the HM-126. And the thing is, is whenever you get this meal... You have to put it together, first of all, and that takes probably eight hours to put together. And I mean, I'm not exaggerating the time or anything. It literally comes in pieces and you have to put it together. That was one thing I did not know whenever I bought this meal and I did not like it. To me, they could have shipped it with the tracks already together, at least in two pieces. And then, uh, you know, they could have shipped it and then saved me a lot of time and aggravation on putting this together. Second thing I didn't know, back to the legs, you have five, six legs. You have six legs on this. All right. You have to have these tracks level from top to bottom, you know, from beginning to end before uh you're going to cut straight lumber so you have to make sure that it is very very level when i first got it i thought that you could take it out and set it up anywhere and you could adjust these legs out get it close to level and it was good to go that is not the case the way i have mine set up is i have a concrete slab board on that concrete slab, I have two treated four befores. I have them anchored to the concrete slab. On top of those four befores, I have seven by nines that you see running this way, all the way down at each set of legs. I took timber lock screws and bolted them into the four before. And only then was I getting as good of results as I am now. Before that, uh, the lumber that I cut was mediocre and it would not turn out right at all. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is the levelization of your tracks is so important. And your foundation that you set your tracks on is very important because if you just set them in dirt what does dirt do whenever you put uh, pressure on it it will uh, compact so therefore your tracks will sink and you'll be off balance or off level before you know it all right so we're going to go on uh, to another part and I'm going to take you guys over here and show you all right guys so you've got your sawmill and uh you're having a problem with like whenever you make four by fours or eight by eight six by sixes whatever it is and you look at it and it looks like your square is tilted and you don't know what's going on it's a simple fix these standards you have two of them on these tracks whenever you roll your log say you cut your first face cut and you roll your log up, you want them leaning 
against these standards to where they show no daylight. If they show daylight on the top or the bottom, then you're off square. So therefore, if you show daylight and you clamp it down and you cut, then uh, your cut is gonna be off square. And then you're gonna have that like awkward square shape that's on, on like the six by six and stuff. I don't have any here, but I have cut them like that before. You get in a rush or you've got a big log that's uh, hard to turn and then it, it's easy done. So that's something that you wanna look out for. And I wanted to tell you guys that. So let's go on to the next segment. All right, guys. So these are the guides that hold your blade, as you can see. Behind these guides on this back side, there's two. There's a bearing here, and on this side, there's a bearing there. I was cutting, and I had a. Uh, a problem with one side was cutting thicker than the other. And I had leveled my tracks multiple times and everything, and I never could get that out. All right, come to find out, the bearing back here had went out. This blade had cut into that bearing. So it was holding this blade up higher than this side over here. And it was causing... Uh, it was causing me to cut thicker on one side than the other. So you always want to check the bearings and make sure that they uh, spin freely. This blade does not go right against this bearing. It, it's out just like an eighth of an inch from that bearing. And while we're here, I'm going to talk about these. You have a block on top and a block on bottom. That controls... Uh, the steadiness of your blade and you want those close to your blade and you want them up off of your blade about an eighth of an inch an eighth to a sixteenth somewhere in there so uh, I was just going to go over that also your allen screws that are in here this is made out of aluminum alright aluminum whenever you tighten aluminum really tight it likes to uh it likes to lock up and it's hard to get them out so always put some anti-seize or grease on them you'll thank me in the long run trust me it helps all right let's go on to the next thing all right guys next thing is your belt always check your belt and make sure that it's tight over time these belts will get cracks in them. And whenever uh, they do, your belt will start slipping and you'll think maybe that you're just cutting really hard wood and you know it's just binding up, but that's not the case. Usually if your belt is slipping, then it's either the belt needs replaced or your blade is bound up somewhere like, like in these blocks like I was talking about or um, it could be off level, that'll cause it to do it too. So I wanted to talk to you about the belt. And you know, of course, always refer to your owner's manual on any of this stuff. I'm not a professional and I'm not, uh, and I'm not telling you to go in and stick your fingers in here and get them cut off. It's not what I'm saying. I always refer to your owner's manual and instructions how to do it. I'm just telling you how I do this. And that is, uh, I, I open this up, I have the engine shut off, I look at the belt, I inspect it and see if it's got any cracks, if it's worn or anything like that. You usually get about uh, a couple months out of these belts at best, so I was just going to let you guys know that. Alright guys, so that was a few things that I wanted to go over and show you guys about a band mill. Uh, it had been on my mind for a while to, you know, kind of do a, like a tips video on some things that, you know, you might have your set up and it might not be cutting right and you don't understand why, you know, a lot of the times it, it just falls back on the leveling. And I just wanted to let you guys know that 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. You know, it, it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and stuff. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoy my channel and you enjoy the content on it, uh, I'd appreciate if you would maybe go over to Patreon and become a Patreon member. It helps me out. And, uh, you know, I'd like to get to the point to where I don't have to rely on uh, YouTube ads and stuff for my channel. I'd like to get away from that. But, you know, until then, I've got to run them. So, I mean, that's just how it is. But if, uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Thank you guys so much.